Till now we have completed 8 theorems in this chapter and uh, now we are going to have discussion on our final theorem which is theorem number 9 maximum power transfer theorem. We call it MPT in short and uh, this theorem is the most important theorem of all. So let us begin our discussion with the statement of maximum power transfer theorem. To obtain the maximum power from a network, the resistance of the load must be equal to the Thevenin's resistance of the network. This statement is very simple to understand. In order to have the maximum power from a network, the load resistance connected to the network should be equal to the Thevenin's resistance of the network. RL should be equal to RTH. So this is the maximum power transfer theorem for DC circuits. In the coming lectures, we will understand the maximum power transfer theorem for AC circuits. Now we will move on to the proof of maximum power transfer theorem. We have a network N and to this network we have connected load resistance RL and we just saw that to have the maximum power from this network, RL should be equal to the Thevenin's resistance of this network. Now to prove it, we are going to have the Thevenin's equivalent circuit, VTH connected in series with RTH and then they are connected in series with RL. Now if we assume current in this circuit to be I, then I will be equal, current I will be equal to VTH, VTH divided by RTH plus RL. Now moving on to the next step. We are trying to find out the maximum power transferred to this resistor and for that we will first find out the power transferred to this resistor. Let's say the power transferred is P and this power will be equal to the square of current flowing through RL multiplied to RL. So we have I squared multiplied to RL. We know I, I is equal to VTH over RTH plus RL. So P will be equal to VTH over RTH plus RL whole squared multiplied to RL. And I will call it equation number one. Now the question is when this power is going to be maximum? For this, understand what will happen to the power when we change RL. When we increase RL, power will increase. But when you focus on current I, you will find increasing RL will reduce the current. And the reduction in current, reduction in current will reduce the power. So initially, when you increase RL, P will increase. And for one value of RL, P is going to be maximum. And after that, when you keep on increasing RL, P will start decreasing. So when we plot the characteristics curve for P versus RL, we are going to have something like this. With increase in RL, P is increasing then becoming maximum and after that it starts decreasing. And we are interested in the value of RL for which P is maximum. When you focus on this curve, you will find at this point P is maximum and the corresponding value of RL is what we want. We want to find out this value of RL. And though let us say that the maximum power is P sub max. Now when we are having the maximum power, the slope of the curve is zero. You can draw a tangent to this point and you can see that the slope of this line is zero and we know the slope will be equal to the derivative of P with respect to RL and it is equal to zero when we are having the maximum power. So the idea is now clear to find out the maximum power and the corresponding value of RL we are going to differentiate P with respect to RL and then we are going to equate the result with zero. So let us focus on our equation number one now. 
we can write P equal to VTH squared VTH squared divided by RTH squared over RL plus twice of RTH plus RL. We can write equation 1 like this. Now we have two options. We can differentiate this with respect to RL and then equate with 0 or we can differentiate the denominator with respect to RL and then equate with 0. We are going to get the same result in both the cases. Why? Because when P is maximum, the denominator is going to be minimum. And like for maximum value, for minimum value also the tangent will have the zero slope. So we are going to take the denominator, we are going to differentiate and then equate with zero. Now when you differentiate RTH squared over RL with respect to RL, you will have negative of RTH squared over RL squared. You will have negative of RTH squared over RL squared. When you differentiate twice of RTH with respect to RL, you will have zero. And when you differentiate RL with respect to RL, you will have one. When you simplify this, you will have RL squared equal to RTH squared. Or you can say that RL is equal to plus minus RTH. So in this way, we have calculated the value of RL for which we are going to have the maximum power. This will give us the maximum power. And now we can replace this question mark with the value of RL, which is RTH. So you can see that we have successfully proved the statement of maximum power transfer theorem. So now we know the value of RL for which P is going to be maximum. So let us find out what will be the maximum power. We will find out P max and we can have it from equation number one. We will have the maximum power equal to VTH squared divided by RTH plus RL whole squared. RL will be equal to RTH for maximum power. So we have twice of RTH squared multiplied to RTH. From here we will have VTH squared divided by four times RTH squared. RTH from denominator and from numerator will cancel out. So we finally have the maximum power equal to square of Thevenin's equivalent voltage divided by four times the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. So remember the two results.